Today in this video, we are going to go over the initial metabolism of the ADHD treatment prodrug, Listix amphetamine, also known as Vivians. This is the process in which Listix amphetamine undergoes a hydrolysis reaction inside the body, yielding L-lysine and the stimulant D-amphetamine, as seen in the figure here. So real quick, before we go any further, I'd like to address that we are going to be mentioning Listix amphetamine or Vivance a lot. So for the remainder of this video, we will refer to it as LDX for short. But anyways, so like I just said, LDX is a prodrug used for the treatment of ADHD. So that brings to question, what exactly is a prodrug? By definition, a prodrug is a biologically inactive compound that can be metabolized in the body to produce a drug. So in this case with LDX, LDX is composed of the stimulant D-amphetamine, as seen here. On the other side, you have an L-lysine protecting group. This lysine protecting group must be cleaved off via hydrolysis of LDX in order to release D-amphetamine into the bloodstream. Here we are going to go over a little history of amphetamines used to treat ADHD. Although it was first reported, a racemic mixture of the D and L isomers of amphetamine could be used as a way to control ADHD symptoms as early as the year 1960, it was not approved by the FDA as a treatment for ADHD until the year 1996, when it was released under the trade name most all of you have heard of, Adderall. Later in 2001, the FDA approved the FDA approved extended release to Adderall as a treatment of ADHD. This had no differences in molecular structure, the only difference being how the capsule of Adderall extended release interacts with the digestive system. In 2007, the FDA approved the use of LDX for the treatment of ADHD under the trade name Vivance. This was the first and is the only approved amphetamine prodrug for the treatment of ADHD. LDX has different effects from Adderall due to its prodrug nature. Some ADHD patients prefer the effects of LDX over the effects of Adderall. What exactly are these differing effects of LDX? Why do some ADHD patients like them better? Why do some doctors prefer prescribing LDX compared to Adderall? First, LDX has a longer duration than Adderall. 12 to 14 hours compared to 4 hours for regular Adderall and 8 hours for extended release Adderall. This is significant because most ADHD patients need to be treated throughout the entire day, and Vyvanse is the only one of these threes that uh, offers a duration long enough for that. This is one of the main reasons that doctors like prescribing LDX over Adderall. Second, LDX offers a more consistent delivery of amphetamine to the brain. The way I can describe this is about an hour after the ingestion of either LDX or Adderall, there is a spike of amphetamine activity in the body. That spike is greater with Adderall compared to LDX. Third, LDX only contains the D isomer of amphetamine compared to Adderall, which contains a mixture of the D and L isomers in a three to one ratio. Also, LDX has a much lower potential for abuse than Adderall. LDX can only enter the bloodstream via a specific transporter in the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum of the small intestines. It then must be hydrolyzed, releasing D-amphetamine. This means for Vivians to work, it must be ingested orally. Adderall can be ingested in many abusive manners, such as snorting. All these different effects and properties of LDX are due to its prodrug pro nature and the metabolic process it goes under to release D-amphetamine. Both LDX and Adderall affect the brain in very similar manners and treat ADHD via the same neurological principle. People with ADHD do not produce enough of the important neurotransmitters, noradrenaline, dopamine, and ephedrine in the frontal lobe of the brain. The frontal lobe of the brain is the area responsible for the control of the important cognitive functions, such as emotional expression, problem solving, memory, language, judgment, and sexual behavior. Both LDX and Adderall provide amphetamines to the frontal lobe of the brain. These amphetamines mimic these neurotransmitters, bringing brain function up to normal levels. Once again, um, we're just, or actually, what you can notice is that the structure of these amphetamines is very similar to the neurotransmitters, so it would make sense that they would uh, mimic their effects. 
And then once again, we can mention that uh, the difference between LDX and, or one of the difference between LDX and Adderall is that LDX only provides the D isomer of amphetamine, while Adderall provides both the D and L isomer of amphetamine to the brain. Now, why is this significant? D amphetamine is more potent, so Vyvanse is, or LDX is said to be the more pure administration of amphetamine to the brain. LDX also delivers D amphetamine to the brain at a different rate than Adderall delivers amphetamine to the brain. And of course, this is due to the pro-drug pro nature of LDX and the rate-limited conversion of LDX to D amphetamine. So beginning with oral administration of the Listex amphetamine dimethylate molecule, the drug is going to pass through the mouth, down the gastrointestinal tract to the stomach. So here we'll see the pill opening up inside the stomach, releasing its contents of Listex amphetamine dimethylate. The Listex amphetamine then travels to the small intestine where it is absorbed via a high-capacity carrier-mediated transport system. D-amphetamine has been detected in portal blood shortly after oral dosing. This suggests that either during or soon after absorption, LDX is metabolized. This biotransformation likely occurs by first-pass metabolism. LDX is neither a substrate nor an inhibitor of the cytochrome P450 enzymes and therefore has low potential for pharmacokinetic drug-drug interactions. LDX is subject to enzymatic hydrolysis after absorption, but is not subject to variations in absorption related to changes in factors such as gastric pH and variations in normal GI transit time. This could result in the consistent rate of hydrolysis and delivery of active D-amphetamine observed with respect to the formulation-based delivery systems of D-amphetamine. The prodrug LDX can be considered a peptidomimetic in which the naturally occurring amino acid L-lysine is covalently linked to D-amphetamine. Thus, it is probable that LDX is a substrate for the peptide transport proteins such as PEPT1 and PEPT2. By analyzing figure 3, it is apparent that LDX is absorbed in the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum of the small intestine, but not absorbed in the colon. Because PEPT1 is highly expressed in the small intestines, but not in the colon of adult rats, the profile of LDX absorption observed is consistent with PEPT1 mediated transport. Once LDX enters the small intestine, it will be slowed down by the intestinal villi. Taking a closer look, we'll see adjacent enterocytes and that each cell has microvilli in the apical region to increase the absorptive area of the apical membrane. Alongside these microvilli is the site at which the PEPT1 is located. The force that drives the uptake of Listex amphetamine dimethylate to the capillary network and subsequently into the portal circulation is created by the action of sodium hydrogen exchangers in the apical membrane. This causes the extracellular pH to be lower and the current physiological conditions allows for the uptake of LDX by the proton-coupled simpler PEP to 1. Research has shown LDX hydrolysis takes place in blood, more specifically in red blood cells. Even more specifically, a recent study showed that hydrolysis of LDX takes place in the cytosol of red blood cells. This figure is from that study. You can see here that the negative control blood plasma and red blood cell membrane fraction did not uh, mediate the hydrolysis of LDX. In the presence of red blood cell lysate, however, LDX was hydrolyzed. It was hydrolyzed at even a greater rate than uh, the presence of red blood cell cytosolic extract. This would make sense compared to the red blood cell 
lysate result because both of these uh, have cy cytosol in it, but this one has other stuff in it that would get in the way of the reaction since it's not a whole cell. It would just inhibit the movement of the uh, molecules that, or uh, organelles that take place in the reaction. Now, you can see that in the whole blood, the rate of hydrolysis was uh, the greatest. And this is because when the uh, cell is intact, when the cell is intact, the, uh, it can uh, help with the fusion of LDX to the cytosol compared to in the lysate or extract, there are no, the structure can't help to mediate that process. So that brings us to the big question. What enzyme or enzymes are responsible for the hydrolysis at LDX? The answer, drum roll please. No one knows, <laughs> at least completely. Research published in 2014 has at least narrowed down the type of enzyme to a metalloaminoendopeptidase. So overall we know the enzyme responsible responsible is a metalloaminoendopeptidase present in the cytosol, a red blood cell. Further research will hopefully one day discover the identity of this enzyme. Thanks for watching.